What's up, everybody? We're back here today, and I've got a surprise for you. Look at that. All right, so it might not look like much to some of you, but that is a 1986 Toyota pickup, four-wheel drive, five-speed manual with a turbo engine. Pretty freaking cool. Doesn't get any cooler than an 80s vehicle with a turbo engine. And what makes this really cool is it's a one owner, completely rust free. So I live in Kansas. I definitely didn't pick this up here. I found it just by chance on a Craigslist ad out in Washington state. I bought this thing sight unseen, which is something you really shouldn't do, but I knew if I didn't jump on it, it'd be gone and I'd never see it again. So I bought this thing and had it shipped here and I just got it in. I haven't even been able to wash this thing. It went through winter all the way through the highway on the back of a semi truck and it's just covered in junk. But before we go take it for a car wash and make it look pretty, it kind of smells like it needs some work. And by that, something is burning off in the engine bay. I don't know what it is. Uh, there's a couple of drips of some sort of fluid. It looks oily. So we'll have to bring it into the garage, see what's going on, and hopefully get it fixed for not too much money. So then, after we sort out all those mechanical issues, we can clean it up and make it look like the nice truck it actually is. So let's get to it. All right, so I brought the truck into the garage and immediately I started smelling this oil burning type smell. So I looked around to see if I could find any obvious oil leaks and while there's a couple little oil leaks, there's nothing that would make me think it would smell like burning oil. So I looked around the intake plumbing and sure enough, I found some oil deposits developing. I pulled off the intake plumbing and there was a pool of oil sitting inside of there. Not good. With this being an old turbo vehicle, I figured the worst. Maybe the turbo had gone out. So I took everything apart, got to the turbo, and checked it out, and the turbo's actually fine. There's no excessive play anywhere, and there's no oil looking like it's coming from there. But what I did find is the vent line from the PCV valve that goes into the intake plumbing had a lot of oil there. So I'm thinking something with the PCV valve system is up. All right, now let's take a look at the oil bullet that I was talking about in the intake plumbing. We'll see that this is our mass airflow sensor on this vehicle, and this is the vent valve that goes into your intake plumbing from your PCV system. Now, if we look in there, you can see how much oil deposit is built up in there from the PCV vent. Now, this is the part that actually goes into the throttle body on this particular engine. We can see how much oil has built up in there, even pooling. So that's not good. That oil is going directly into the intake manifold and the engine's burning it off, hence the oil burning smell. Now here's the PCV valve that I pulled out of the valve cover and it looks fine from the outside, but if we shake it, there's no noise at all. Inside of here is a spring loaded valve and it needs to be moving freely. If it's not, then it's not gonna vent correctly and cause excess crankcase ventilation pressure. You can see while I was removing the PCV valve, the grommet that was holding it in basically turned to plastic and just broke up in bits. So we'll have to replace that as well. Now here's a brand new PCV valve, and when we shake it, you hear that? That's the way it should sound. So if this is clogged, you won't get proper ventilation, and you'll build up crankcase pressure, and it'll push it through your intake track and burn off that excessive oil. So hopefully, with this new valve, we'll no longer have an oil burning smell. Aside from the oil leaking that I observed, I also noticed that the power steering pump was also leaking as well. If we take a look here, here's the power steering fluid reservoir and here's the power steering fluid pump. We'll see all this wetness accumulating here and it's actually coming from this hose that feeds from the reservoir going into the top of the pump. You'll see that the hose has become old and hard and brittle and is allowing fluid past. There also might be an O-ring at the top here of the pump that needs replaced as well. Now, I don't think it's purely down to the hose. I think someone actually installed the wrong type of power steering fluid into this reservoir here. You see how clear it is? This fluid should be red as it's actually automatic transmission fluid. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna replace this hose. We're gonna place the O-ring on top of here and we're also gonna change out the fluid for some red automatic transmission fluid.
reassemble the engine, it's important to observe the parts we removed before we put them back in. We want to make sure they're worthwhile putting back in and they haven't degraded so that they cause further issues down the road. So for example, let's take a look at this turbo inlet hose. This hose connects directly to the turbo compressor housing and directs fresh air from the air filter into the turbo. Now you can see this thing is every bit of 32 years old and there's cracking present throughout. Now this is a heavy duty piece of rubber so it's no wonder it's lasted as long as it has. Now this is the original Toyota branded part but you can't buy it anymore. Because this truck was only made for two years the market for producing old parts like this are just not there for Toyota. So ultimately if you find yourself having to replace parts like this you're gonna have to find an aftermarket alternative. I took the dimensions of this particular hose and went out searching for a silicone alternative. This 90 degree silicone elbow has the same inner diameter dimensions and external dimensions. It's 5 inches high and 5 inches wide and should fit just as well as this original piece. This hose also came with some new band clamps which are a lot easier to use than these original crimp clamps anyway. The silicone hose was just one of the many parts I found out I had to replace when going to reassemble this thing. But ultimately, the small amount of money up front will save you a ton of hassle down the road because you know you have new parts going in. drive vehicles are really cool pieces of kit, but what most owners don't realize is they require a significant amount more maintenance than a simple two-wheel drive vehicle. That's because there's a front differential, a rear differential, a transfer case, and a transmission. Each one of these gearboxes has fluid that must be changed at a certain amount of time. Now this truck, since I don't have any records on when they were all last changed, I'm going to go through every single gearbox and change the fluid. To do this, I'm going to jack the truck up on all four corners, remove the wheel so I have the most access possible, and drain the old fluid out and put new stuff in. Here we go. All right, so the first gearbox we're gonna attack is the rear differential. Now, something to keep in mind whenever replacing gearbox fluid is to always remove the fill plug before you remove the drain plug. If you remove your drain plug before you remove your fill plug and then find out your fill plug is seized, you could find yourself in a lot of trouble. for the differential to drain, let's clean up the drain plug and fill plug and put some new crush washers onto them. It's important to put new crush washers on there because once the old ones have been crushed, they don't really seal very well. They're cheap enough to replace with new, so you might as well just put some new ones on there. With all the oil drained out, it's time to refit your drain plug and then fill up through the fill plug with the correct weight of gear oil. This particular differential takes 2.4 quarts of GL5 ADW90 gear oil. While it says it requires 2.4 quarts, really you just need to keep filling the differential until it starts pouring out the fill plug. That way you know you have the exact correct amount in there. differential oil changed, now it's time to do the front. It uses the same differential gear oil, but it only holds about 1.7 or 1.6 quarts. Now the same steps apply. You want to remove the fill plug first and then the drain plug. So let's get to it. With 
the differential oil changed, it's now time to tackle the manual transmission and transfer case gearboxes. Now these gearboxes use a different type of oil. They use a 75W90 oil that's GL4 rated. Now this is a little bit heavier oil, so you don't get any grinding when you're shifting gears. And it's important to use this GL4 and not a GL5 in these older vehicles. Now the thing about this GL4 oil is that it's actually a lot more expensive than the regular GL5 stuff. And it's also a lot harder to get. You're not gonna just find it at your regular auto parts store, so you probably have to order it ahead of time. For this particular truck with the transfer case and uh, transmission, it takes about five quarts of this GL4 fluid. And that runs almost $75, $80. So be prepared for that expense. Let's get this done. The next point of focus on this truck is the brake fluid and the clutch fluid. If we take a look at the reservoirs, we'll see how black that fluid is. Now since I don't have any records on when this fluid was last changed, it's going to be the safest to just replace it. We'll go ahead and exchange all the fluid that's in the reservoir and then flush the entire system from the brakes to the clutch slave cylinder to make sure we have fresh fluid inside of the systems. Okay, so that wraps up a bunch of needed repairs and much needed maintenance. I now consider this truck benchmarked. I know the condition of everything inside of it. So now it's time to give this truck a much needed car wash. I just got back from washing the truck and I am blown away with the condition of this thing. It's hard to believe this is 32 years old. It has 265,000 miles on it. But you know, at the end of the day, it's a one owner vehicle. So the original owner really took care of this thing and I'm lucky to have found it. The paint on this thing is in ridiculously good condition. I haven't even waxed yet. This is just a quick car wash that I did and it already shines. Imagine what a wax would do. It's got a couple little uh, light scratches in the paint, but it's uh, probably gonna come out with a good waxing. So that's good news. If you look, all the rubber seals are still soft and supple, so that's good, because these things, I mean, they're hard to find nowadays. I mean, there's hardly any dents. There's maybe one right up here by the fender. You can hardly see it. And then there's one up here on the hood, and then that is just all of the dents on this thing. 
the interior is in incredible condition for having driven 265,000 miles. I mean, look at this. You can tell the original owner put this dashboard cover on there, which is really important, especially when in subject to the sunlight. If we take this cover off, you can just look at that. No cracks. It's nearly impossible to find a truck like this without a cracked dashboard. So again, I'm super lucky to have found this truck. Now let's take a look at the engine bay. Again, it's for a truck with 260,000 miles, 32 years old, this thing is immaculate. And now that it has fresh fluids all the way around, I know that it will continue running as good as it looks. Now it is a truck after all, so it has been used for hauling, but you know, Aside from some missing paint, it's really good. It's not too dented up. There's no rust. So really, that's a good looking bed. So needless to say, I'm pretty happy with this purchase. This truck is a lot nicer than even I anticipated when I first saw it in the pictures. Of course, when you buy a vehicle sight unseen like I did with this truck, you never know what you're really gonna get. Now this truck, no doubt, has a few mechanical issues that I still haven't fixed yet, but I gotta drive the truck for a little while to see what those really are. I know there's still a little bit of an oil leak coming from the front of the engine, so I've got to put some miles on this truck and see if I can track where that oil leak's really originating from. But that will be a future episode. So thanks again for watching, and we'll see you again soon. Mm -hmm.